Hey, what is up? Welcome back to the channel. I have another golf ball review for you today, and we are reviewing the Srixon Z-Star Diamond Edition. Let's dive right in. So first of all, I had to come outside and do these reviews today because it is such a nice day living in Florida. We've had amazing weather. It has been kind of hot, but to be honest with you, I don't mind that. You know, when you move to Florida, you just, that's part of it, it's hot. So I deal with that, but I do love the warm weather. It's out here early in the morning, so it's not too bad yet, but let's dive into this Srixon Diamond. So I love the Srixon uh, Golf Line. I love the Z-Star, I love the Z-Star 15. Um, I love the Q-Star Tour. I, I just, Strixon golf balls in general have always performed really well on my channel. Heck, even the Soft Feel had a really good review. So with that being said, when they were coming out with a new Tour Ball, uh, at first I was a little excited, but then when I kind of read a little bit more about it, I thought, ah, well, that's kind of a, a niche market really, because essentially, if you don't know, they kind of designed this golf ball for Brooks Kepka. Uh, they signed him maybe last year, maybe two years ago now, I don't know, time kind of flies, but they signed Brooks Kepka. I think it was last year. Um, essentially, he's using all their clubs now, he's using their driver, their golf ball, everything, uh, but they kind of designed this golf ball specifically for him. He was kind of telling them what he wanted in a golf ball and how he wanted it to perform, and they kind of just came up with this on the spot. And if you're gonna spend all that time in research, of course, you're gonna end up selling it as well to try to make some of your money back. It's only right, it only makes sense, it's good business. But what does that mean for the rest of us? Does that mean that this golf ball is actually something we can use? I mean, is the average swinger, the average consumer, weekend warrior actually gonna see any benefit from this golf ball? Well, at first, just without even looking, my response was no, I, I sincerely doubt it. But I did take a look at this chart here, and if you look at this chart, this is on Strixon's website, you'll notice there really isn't a ton Ton of difference between their three tour balls. Um, there is, of course, the Z-Star, which promises to have the softest feel. It comes in at about a 92 compression, which is actually still really firm for uh, a golf ball. Now, they don't feel like 92 compression. Srixon does an amazing job of that, but that's actually the softest golf ball they have. And then coming in at 102 compression is both the, the Z-Star 15 as well as the Z-Star Diamond. As you also notice from the chart, it does say that all three golf balls are three-piece. None of them are four-piece. Um, the compressions are all really close. The dimples are all really close. They're actually very similar. You'll just notice subtle, subtle differences there, such as it looks like the diamond is going to have a little bit higher iron spin as far as mid iron spin and a little bit higher driver spin. Uh, now, when it says that, I don't necessarily think that that's going to be backspin. I think that's going to be side spin because one of the things I read about this golf ball is that Brooks Kepko really wanted a golf ball he could bend left and right at will because when you're a pro golfer and you can do that, it must be nice. Uh, that's what they want. They want controlled spin to where they can really open, close their club face, get it to go where they want, hit a nasty draw, a slice, a hook, whatever they need to do. That's what this golf ball will probably be for. So now after looking at this chart, there's a couple things there that actually kind of make me, would lead me to believe, excuse me, uh, that actually maybe you could see some benefit out of this. It's not a strict tour golf ball like some of these other ones that have such a high compression and uh, the forgiveness is so low. And that's going to be something I really test is the forgiveness is if you miss hit it, what does it do? Because um, that's really where the average golfer comes into play. If you end up mishitting a tour golf ball like this and it ends up slicing on you real bad, you end up losing 10, 20 yards, it just doesn't offer the consistency that an average golfer would need. So we'll definitely test that. Let's go ahead and get into the design of the golf ball. So Strixon, of course, has their logo on the front. It's a, not a bad logo. Uh, you'll know it really well. This one actually has a gold number on it for the diamond, which is pretty cool. I don't see a lot of gold numbers on golf balls. It's just not something I see. It's usually blue, red, or black, really. That's the only three I ever see. Occasionally, you'll see a green, you know, for like a two-piece golf ball. Um, but seeing a gold is definitely different, which is kind of nice. Looking on the side there, I'm not a fan of this alignment tool. You know, there's a lot of companies making a alignment tools that are a lot better than this now. Um, my, my longtime followers know it. I love a nice thick bar. I want it, you know, symmetrical. I want it to be able to be lined up and see it. I'm six foot one, so I'm pretty tall. I want to be able to see that thick line. Um, and if you're, if you're someone who doesn't care about an alignment tool, then you'll probably be fine anyway. But as far as this one goes, there's a lot of companies out there, even Strixon with their, their Divide has a great alignment tool. They were one of the first ones to actually make the half ball and ball design to where the whole golf ball, they sparked all that. 
Uh, so to see them come out on the Tour one and have just, a, just an okay one, I wish it was a little bit better. I know they do technically have a divide model of their Strix and Z-Star series, but I still would like to see it on the basic models as well, even just maybe something a little more symmetrical. However, not a super big deal. It's not bad. I've definitely seen worse. Uh, otherwise, the golf ball does feel very premium. You can definitely tell it's urethane. It feels like a Strix and golf ball, which is awesome. So let's get out to the chipping and putting green. Let's see how we did out there. All right, so initially my thought process is, hey, this is gonna have some checkup. It's a tour grade ball, and it does. It has a really good amount of checkup from off the green. However, if you're the type of person who likes a really soft, you know, more bouncy ball, squishy feel around the green, not gonna have a lot of luck here. This feels more traditional. It feels more tour level. Um, despite not being a four-piece golf ball, it does kind of act like a four-piece. It actually does feel very firm. It feels very clicky. Uh, miss hits feel very heavy. Um, it's not gonna get as much roll as you normally would. Some of these two-piece golf balls I use you know you just barely swing the wedge and it really just springs off there like a bouncy ball and just rolls to the hole you don't have to use a lot of your hands and arms not the case here I had to get a lot of arms a lot of hands involved body I had to really attempt to get the golf ball to do what I wanted it to because there wasn't just that added forgiveness that a lot of those two and three piece golf balls value tour offer now where this golf ball really shines is the putter. Uh, using a mallet putter, using a bladed putter, they actually feel the same, which is really tough to do. That's something you see companies like Titleist, Callaway, the big TaylorMade, the big name brands out there. They do a really good job at making their golf ball feel buttery and smooth through all the clubs, whether you're using mallet, uh, uh, blade, you know, old school, new school, no matter what putter you have, they really try to make it feel consistent. That's the case here. I was really impressed how buttery and soft it felt. It does have a mild click. It's not anything overbearing, but it's a mild click, kind of like a traditional golf ball would to let you know feedback. Um, but again, nothing crazy there. It didn't bother me at all. It actually sounded really good. It had just about the, just about the right amount of pitch, if that makes sense. So I really enjoyed that. Uh, it rolls true, 10 out of 10 roll. Um, there's no chug effect here. It really is a consistent roll from the time it leaves your putter to the time it goes in the hole, or in my case, uh, two feet past the hole. But the point is, is it feels really good. And I was impressed all around with what Strixon's done here. Um, I would say as far as the putter goes, 10 out of 10, really impressed. The wedge is also really good. It's just whether or not you actually prefer that style of golf ball. All right, so when it comes to the feel of this golf ball as far as off the, uh, off the tee, off the irons, off the wedges, um, it's a little bit firmer than the Z-Star 15 for sure. The Z-Star actually feels really, really soft, especially for a 92 compression. They did a phenomenal job with that. Uh, but the 15 actually feels decently soft too for being 102 compression, but this one's really not the case. This one definitely feels like your more traditional firm golf ball. You know, you hit it pure, it makes a click, it's a firm press, but it springs off really well. But if you miss hit it, feels very rockish, you know, hurts the hands a little bit and you'll know it immediately. So it definitely, I think, based on the ball striking alone is gonna be for a more advanced player. If you're someone who doesn't strike the iron that well, you're gonna have a lot of the times that your hands hurt and you're probably gonna get sick of it real quick. So let's dive into the numbers. Let's see how they do. Now, remember, I have an average swing speed, 93 mile an hour with the driver, and that is right in line with the average male for the world. So that's just right in line with it. It's, I think the average is 92.9 and mine's 92.6 or something. So it's right there. So getting into the nine iron, we have 87.2 on your ball mile per hour speed, which is very low. But usually with these tour golf balls, the nine iron and the short irons get hurt. So it's not a big deal yet. 121.6 on your total distance. I lost about four and a half yards, five yards. 113.4, I lost about five and a half yards, and it launched at a 23.3, so it did launch a little higher than my average. So those numbers aren't super bad. I could get used to those. I do prefer to have a consistent golf ball across all platforms, uh, across all clubs. Not the case here though. It is a little low on the nine iron. It would be something I'd have to get a little used to, but let's dive into the seven iron now. Let's see if that helps a little bit. 6,211 on your spin, which is below average actually. That's a little below average. And as I said before, I didn't think it was going to back spin a ton. I thought it was going to be more side spin. Um, 107.9 on your ball mile per hour speed. That's actually really good. That's an hour, um, a mile per hour more than my average. And here's where we really get into some good stuff, guys. 165.5 on the average distance. That is five yards more than my average. 154.1, that's about six yards more than my average. And it launched at 18.5, which was a mid ball flight for me. That's my average. So those numbers are really, really good. It had average spin. It wasn't great spin, but it had average spin and it actually gained me a lot of distance. 
distance. And that's what a lot of these tour player golf balls do. They're designed for player distance. Um, so I like that number. I think it's consistent with what Strixon's trying to do. So that's awesome. And the fact that I'm an average swing speed and I was able to get one of the farthest seven iron averages I've ever had, that's a really a good bonus too. All right, getting into the five hybrid now. So 43.85 on your spin, that is above average. So that's actually spinning pretty well. That's gonna stick a green. 119.8 is a phenomenal ball speed. This is where the club really felt like it was compressing the golf ball really well. Um, you know, you, the golf ball is firmer. So when I was swinging with this hybrid and I was really getting a good strike, it just felt like it was coming off like a rocket. 200.1 on the distance, which is absolutely insane. It is very rare for me to get uh, a 200. It happens occasionally, but it's very rare to happen. Um, so really fast there, 186.6. Um, th these are like 11, 12 yards more than my average. That's amazing. And it launched at 15.2, which is about uh, a little higher than my average, but in the 15 range is exactly where I want my hybrid to be. So that kind of checks all boxes there. It spins really good. It's going to stick to green. Um, I was able to get a really good strike with it most of the time, and actually even the forgiveness wasn't too bad. Forgiveness on the seven iron and the nine iron was okay. Not as bad as I thought it would be, but not as great as I was hoped it would be. So it's kind of in the middle, but the forgiveness off of the hybrid now that I'm swinging a faster club with a little more weight behind it, actually it improved quite a bit, and that's where that 119 comes from. So even though I had some miss hits in there, it was still able to almost average 120 mile per hour. And honestly, those numbers across the board are great. I love those. Last but not least, we have the driver. And so we're looking at 2968 on the driver spin, which is a little higher than my normal, um, but still lines up with what Strixon was saying. 249.7, I gained about six and a half yards with my driver, which is awesome. 135.4, that is higher than my average. 228.8, that's six yards higher than my average. And it launched at 16, which was pretty high compared to my average. So I don't mind that at all. Anytime I get a little extra height with my driver, allows the ball to carry a little further. Um, I wish it wasn't spinning exactly so high because that is gonna cause my driver to kind of balloon up in the air a little bit, and I'm not a big fan of that. But I do like the distance numbers. I like the height number, I like the ball speed number, and again, um, with the forgiveness of this golf ball, I'm not a great striker of the driver. I do struggle with it sometimes. So the fact that I was able to average those numbers with a golf ball like this, I would say is pretty good. It has overall more forgiveness than I would have thought, but there's definitely golf balls that forgive you better, maybe some more two-piece ones. All right, when it comes to durability, if you know Strixon at all, they do struggle with this sometimes. Uh, that's kind of been the main knock against Strixon is their durability issues. Um, with this one, it's kind of the same. Most of the time, Strixon golf balls for me will get me through about a round, and that's about it, which isn't the end of the world, but it's not the best I've ever tested either by far. Uh, this one's kind of the same. Looking at this, you can see a lot of marks, a lot of little cuts starting to form, scrapes. It just looks like it's been beat to heck, man. And, and golf balls I've been testing lately have been really pristine. You know, after 60, 70 shots, they look like they're brand new out of the package. The Mizuno was that way. Uh, the Snell for me personally performed that way. Um, this one, not the case. There's definitely some scuffs there and I, I would be weary about using this. I think it would affect the ball flight a little bit after that. Um, so overall, okay. You know, two and a half, three out of five, somewhere in there, it's okay. It's not great. I would expect a little bit more from a golf ball of this price range. Um, which this golf ball does come in at a very, very high price range. Not as much as the Pro V1, not as much as, you know, the TP5X, uh, but it's still up there. It's still a high, high-priced golf ball, and I expect it to be really high-performing and have some really good durability. So I wish that was a little better. Okay, so where does that put my thoughts with this golf ball? Um, well, I mean, actually, I'm kind of surprised. When, when the golf ball first came out, like I said, I just really didn't have any hope for it. I thought it was very niche. I thought it was very specific. Uh, to, to a crowd, and that is kind of true in a way, but I, I didn't think I'd have any good performance numbers with it whatsoever, and that's just not the case. Short irons, wedges, I did lose some yardage on, but I'm sure it performs really well. I'm sure it you know, spins side to side based on my test on the golf course. Um, but then once you get into the mid iron and on, I really didn't lose any distance. I was actually gaining distance pretty much in every aspect, whether it be seven iron, five hybrid driver, I was gaining about anywhere from six to 12 yards per club, which is really good. Um, I didn't expect to do that with such a high compression golf ball. What you really have to be weary for here is in order to play this golf ball, you really have to be an amazing iron striker. You have to be able to go up to the golf ball and say, okay, my green is like this, my green's over here, the hole's over here, I'm gonna hit a nice little draw. So when it hits the green, it's gonna spin a little left and get closer to the hole. 
that's a pretty niche market. I mean, the majority of players who are weekend warriors like me, like you, like most people watch my channel, uh, they're gonna want something with a little more forgiveness, maybe just a little more sticking the green, and that's gonna be your Z-Star, just your regular Z-Star, or if you have a faster swing speed, it might even be the Z-Star 15. This is only going to be specifically if you can bend the ball at will, if you can really do exactly what you wanna do and hit fades and you gotta hit around a tree so you hit a tiger stinger and really you know, curve it around the tree. And you know, you just, you really can get the golf ball to do what you want. Um, if you can't do that, even to a degree, uh, if you can't do that nine out of 10 times, I would stay away from this one. I think the Z-Star and the Z-Star 15 are both amazing golf balls. And I think they add a little bit more forgiveness as far as side spin uh, compared to what this one does. So if you are someone who is looking for a pro quality golf ball, you are just, you know, you're a zero handicap, you're a scratch golfer, uh, maybe even a plus handicap, and you're looking for a good ball out there. Um, I think this one actually might be good for you if you can get past the cover issues. You have to use one every round. Otherwise, you might stick with a Pro V1 or you might stick with a Chrome soft or something like that um, but otherwise really good performing golf ball I just wish there was a bigger market for it that's all guys as always keep watching to keep saving and keep learning until next time